I recently passed 10,000 followers on LinkedIn, and in this video, I'm going to share with you some of my best tips for how I got there so that you can do the same. Welcome or welcome back. My name is Megan Grant, and on this channel, you will learn how to find freedom through freelancing. Before we keep going, a disclaimer. I have no magic pills, tricks, or hacks that will teach you how to blow up overnight. I also have zero interest in teaching you how to go viral, which by nature cannot be taught. And also it should not be your goal because going viral can actually backfire. That said, let's get into it. All right, tip number one, respond to every single point of engagement. I respond to almost every single comment on every single post of mine. I also respond to almost every single DM that I get. DM meaning direct message. This is because LinkedIn, like every other platform, is not a one-way street. And too many people treat it like that, which is why they don't see any progress. Their attitude, their mindset is me, 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 when it needs to be us, us, us. So I read just about everything and respond to just about everyone. You don't have to respond with an epic novel. You can keep it, you know, short and to the point. Uh, so for example, if someone sends me an invitation to connect and the invitation says something like, hey, Megan, I noticed that we're both writers and I wanted to add you to my network. I might accept that invite and respond with something like, hey, Bob, it's great to connect with you here on LinkedIn. And that's it. I read their message, acknowledge them, and then respond with something simple and friendly. The only DMs that I don't respond to is if their very first message to me is trying to sell me something. I don't respond to that. Um, or if they just say, hi, okay, hi. Um, and also if they say something inappropriate, I don't acknowledge that with any response. Now note that if someone reaches out to me, says hello, I respond, and then they follow up with a sales pitch, as long as they were still friendly and respectful, I will respond and gently tell them no. I'll say something like, thanks so much for the offer, but I'm not interested. You gotta be really careful with that knee-jerk reaction you have when someone is trying to sell you something. We're all out here doing our best and we're all trying to grow our businesses. Responding to that person goes a long way. Kindness goes a long way. As someone who uses LinkedIn actively to try to connect with potential clients, I can tell you that I would much rather be politely rejected than ignored. So it's totally okay to respond to those people and be like, hey, thanks so much, but this isn't for me. People appreciate that response. Now, if they're rude about it, if they sell you and they do it in a very you know, aggressive or tacky way, bye, you don't have to respond. Anyway, I'm getting off track. Why does this work so well? Well, social networking is all about networking. Shocker, I know. It's about relationships and conversations, which coincidentally, are the foundation of every business. When LinkedIn sees you making a concerted effort to form relationships and have conversations, whether it's in the comment section or in your inbox, it rewards you by showing your content to more people and helping you improve your engagement, your reach, and your traffic. You're also going to get more followers. Note that quality matters. Spam or fluff or filler content isn't going to get you anywhere. So when you respond to someone's comment or someone's direct message, respond thoughtfully and intentionally. Number two, I have filled up every nook and cranny of my profile. A lot of freelancers, when they come to me for help with growing their business, understandably, they kind of rush through the process of setting up their profile. And I get it, but your profile is the foundation for everything. That's the thing that people like you and potential clients are going to go back and visit to decide if they wanna interact with you more and ultimately follow you. So this part is really important and it's definitely worth slowing down to fill out your profile properly. I've already got several videos on how to write your headline and your about section along with setting up your featured section. So I will drop all of those links in the description below. But let's highlight a few key parts of this. Now, one of the first things I'm always emphasizing to my students is that we need to differentiate between features and benefits. Let's do an example. I'm a writer, okay? So a feature of what I offer is SEO. A feature is keyword research, editing and proofreading. The benefit is the result of the feature. 
higher rankings in Google, more website traffic. So do you see the difference there? The feature is what you do, the benefit is the outcome. It's what people get out of it. Your LinkedIn profile needs both of these things because while features are important and you do wanna talk about them, benefits are what speak to people more because there's more of a like an emotional response to them. I'm also mindful of this distinction in the posts that I write for the same reason. Secondly, and this is something else that I drill into my students' heads, um, it might seem counterintuitive, but my profile, your profile, it's not all about me. It's about what I have to offer people, and the same goes for you. I know that the reaction here is probably, well, why wouldn't I focus on myself? It's my profile. You're not taking the focus away from yourself, okay? Rather, what it is is, here's what I do, and here's why you should care. Remember what I said earlier, it's a two-way street. Number three, I stopped sharing outside links completely. When I say outside links, I'm talking about any links that take people away from LinkedIn. So I stopped sharing links to my YouTube channel, my blogs, my products, everything. I did this for a very good reason and I've talked about this on my channel before. LinkedIn's goal, every platform's goal, is to get people to stay on that platform for as long as possible. Makes sense. So if you're doing something that sends people away from LinkedIn, the platform doesn't like that and they're not going to show your content to as many people and it's going to affect how many people ultimately follow you. So my goal with my posts is to get people to read them, to get people to click the see more button to expand the post and to comment and join in on the conversation. And this has been a game changer for me. Not sharing outside links was one of the best changes that I made in my approach. I hesitated to do this for a long time because I thought, well, if I'm not sharing links, how can I promote my stuff? What I do is I use the post to provide a ton of value and I make sure that I write my LinkedIn content in a way where it can stand on its own. But then um, either you know, towards the end or at the very end, I'll say something like, I have a YouTube video that goes into more detail. Comment if you want me to send you the link. This works really well. Tons of people comment saying, yes, send me the link. So I DM them, I say hello, and I say, here's the link you requested. This is a win, 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 win all around. It helps both of us, me and the recipient, because by having that conversation in the direct messages and also in the comment section, we are improving our engagement, which LinkedIn loves. So I win and they win. I'm able to provide that person with more value by sending them that video. I still use LinkedIn to direct traffic to my YouTube page where freelancers and other professionals have the opportunity to get to know me more and hopefully learn more. So all around, everyone benefits. YouTube is a very powerful engine and it's worked wonders for me. YouTube and LinkedIn are my biggest platforms. Uh, so the fact that I can use LinkedIn to send people to YouTube while still improving my traffic on LinkedIn is like, it's perfect. Also, a lot of people have told me that once they land on my YouTube channel, they binge my content, which is music to my ears. That's what every YouTuber wants. So the fact that because of LinkedIn, people go to this second platform where I'm able to help more and deliver more value, that's why I do what I do to reach as many people as possible and help them as much as possible. So I'm still using LinkedIn to grow my platform elsewhere. You just need to do it without sharing outside links. I know it can be scary to stop sharing outside links, but I'm telling you, if you're doing that, you're just shooting yourself in the foot. So just try it my way, just try. You can still promote your stuff, just don't post the link. Number four, I stopped being afraid of getting a little personal on LinkedIn and I completely underestimated how much this would resonate with people. My LinkedIn used to be strictly business on purpose. I can remember thinking to myself, this doesn't belong on LinkedIn, that doesn't belong on LinkedIn. So I stuck so closely to sharing, you know, tips and, and how to's and only that. That information is still important and I still do it and I will continue doing it. But like I've talked about on this channel before, uh, particularly in these videos, I can't only talk business forever. On this channel, in those videos I mentioned, I've said that only talking about business gets boring. And also this channel is about helping you find freedom through freelancing, right? Uh, there's more to that than LinkedIn and learning how to set your rates and learning how to create a portfolio. 
and, and all of that. Mindset, goals, mental health, work-life balance, all of that stuff plays a role. So why am I not talking about it more? If I don't talk about these things, first of all, I get bored as hell, but also I'm doing you a disservice because my business, I didn't grow it to what it is solely by perfecting my approach on LinkedIn. So to only talk about that on YouTube, on LinkedIn, wherever, it's not giving you the full picture anyway. So on LinkedIn and YouTube, um, I've started talking about more things, covering more topics within boundaries. Recently, I've shared posts about how mental health plays a huge role in literally everything. I've talked a little bit more about my spirituality, which plays a huge role in my business. I posted about how once I hit about $20,000 a month on, in my business and then set my sights on $50,000 a month, I stopped caring. It wasn't worth it. That isn't something I would have shared in the past, but I talk about it now because it's so important. I've talked about how it's okay if freelancers have no interest in earning five figures a month because who cares? You don't need to be making $10,000 a month to be financially stable. So anywho, I started kind of venturing outside my comfort zone a little bit and started talking about these things. And I was scared to at first um, because I know what works and it's worked very well for me. So anytime you venture outside that little bubble, it's like, oh, how are people gonna react? Um, they like it. It's really resonating with people. I thought it would flop, but I posted it anyway because I wanted to and it was important to me. So I told myself in my head, you gotta detach yourself from the outcome, which I talk about in this video, and um, post it because you care about it. And I did, and I was very proud of myself for that. And it was just like the cherry on top that other people are enjoying it too. So I've done that on both LinkedIn and YouTube, as I said, and the response has been really great. Again, the more um, traditionally business-oriented content, I'm not not doing that anymore. I'm just varying it a little bit with other types of content. There's more variety. I wouldn't be an honest person if I didn't tell you this. Growth takes time. That sounds very not sexy, and a lot of other you know gurus, mentors, coaches, whatever, they're not going to tell you that. They're not going to tell you this stuff takes time because especially for the people who are trying to sell you something, like sell you a course, they want you to think that overnight results are possible. They want you to think that they're gonna help you blow up overnight. They're not, it's not real. And furthermore, like I said earlier, in terms of going viral, that, and I've talked about this before, if for some reason, you manage to blow up overnight and your business, your following, whatever did this, this is not sustainable. I can almost guarantee you that not long after you will do that. So instead, what I push for in my program with my viewers and my followers is slow but sustainable growth. Slow but steady wins the race. It doesn't sound as exciting, but it works. We live in an age of instant gratification. So a lot of people, when they try the things that I talked about in this video and they don't see that immediate payoff, they're kind of like, well, that didn't work, on to the next. You will never get anywhere with that mindset because building a business does not work like that. The good news is if you just keep showing up, that alone is going to drastically increase the odds that you will be successful because so many other people are gonna get bored and restless and they're gonna quit. I'm telling you, this stuff does get boring sometimes. It can't be exciting all day, every day. But if you can hang in there and try different things to see what works best for you, you will get results. My students and I don't use LinkedIn as a shortcut or a trick. We use it to manually form relationships and start conversations and get to know our potential clients manually, not automated, which I talk about in this video. We slow down a little bit and we focus on quality alongside quantity and it really pays off. But don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean that you have to sit around and wait for months and months and months to see results. Um, I think the fastest I've seen one of my students land clients, he landed his first two clients within three weeks. So the potential is there. Most of the freelancers who come to me for help have a very simple goal in mind. I want more control over my life. 
That's really what it comes down to. You know, they have money goals. They might want to earn 5,000 a month or 7,000 a month or 10, whatever. But when we dig deeper and I ask them, okay, why do you want to earn that much? It's because they want to make more working less. They want to control their schedule, control their income. They want to have more time for their families. That's the real goal. Freelancing is just the vessel that we use to get there. It's all about controlling your time and energy and money and freelancing can be the path that gets you there. If this sounds like you, if any of this is resonating with you, then below this video, I'm going to leave a link to my program, Revenue Spark, where you can learn more about the curriculum. Uh, you can read some testimonials from current students inside the program. And if you think it's something you might want to explore, the next step is to book a call and speak with me and we can see if we're a good fit for each other. As always, thank you for your time and for watching this video. I'm really grateful for every second of your day that you give to me. And all I ask is that if you haven't already, you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that YouTube knows that you like my content. If you have any questions, drop me a comment and I'll see you next time.